Hello, everybody. Welcome back to ADHD Power Tools. Today, Brooke, I want to ask you, what are some tools you can give us for us ADHDers to stop taking things personally? I don't take things personally, <laughs> ever. <laughs> never have I ever. Never have I no. ever. <laughs> never have I ever. Um, so yes, with ADHD, we can be pretty empathetic, um, which can help and hurt us at the same time. Um, and very, very sensitive, uh, rejection sensitivity is real with adults with ADHD. Um, and on top of that, just in general, um, most of our thoughts are negative. So you put those things together and now when people say something that might not land well with you, we might take it personally. So um, how many times have you been confused, you know, where someone says something and you think that it's about you or you did something wrong or maybe they're in a bad mood and you think that you've done something to impact them, but it has literally nothing to do with you. This, I know this happens to me all the time, especially with my husband because I'm with him the most. Mm -hmm. um, so there's a lot of reasons why this happens besides the things that I mentioned. A lot of it can be based on, you know, like past experiences, perhaps you've had a traumatic event or, you know, you've been bullied or um, whatever, you know, we can be bringing the past into the present and, and just assuming and projecting that there's an issue when really there might not be any issue. So when something like that occurs, you can ask yourself, like, what are the facts and what story am I telling myself? And just separate the past from the, the current and the future. Um, another thing is to consider the source. So sometimes we take everyone's opinion too sensitive, but really like, who is this person? Is this person that you agree with, like someone that you agree with their values and you know, is this someone you actually value as a person um, or is it not? So someone might say something off the cuff that might offend you, but you don't really value their opinion. So you might not need to take it so personally and dig deep on that um, when it's someone that you don't value. Um, another thing is, you know, children with ADHD and children in general are egocentric. Um, but as you get older, you're not as egocentric, but very often we think about ourselves. So we can be extremely sensitive to what other people think and say when, in fact, it's usually not about us that they're talking about. So ask yourself, is this even about me? Like, do I know this is about me? Um, unless the person tells you that it's your fault uh, for them feeling a certain way or it's about you, then you don't know for sure if it actually is about you. So um, we might exacerbate the situation further for ourselves when it's really not about ourselves. Um, another thing is to evaluate the evidence. Again, I said, distinguish between the facts and the story. Ask yourself, what do I know to be true about what happened or what was said? Um, another thing is as ADHD years, we can ruminate on thoughts. So ways to interrupt the rumination is to take a rubber band, snap it on your wrist, um, change your environment. So go to a different room, maybe go outside, walk, grab some water, dance, listen to music, uh, laugh, talk to someone who can make you laugh, watch some comedy. Um, all of those things can help interrupt those negative thoughts that I said that so many people have. Um, and can spiral about. Um, <clears throat> with what we said previously about like, you know, do we even care about the source that much? And like, should we care? Um, you know, choose your circle wisely. You are the average of the five people you spend the most time with. So if you're limiting your time to people that you actually care and value their opinions to, you know, you'll be able to be treated the way that you want. Um, and then you won't be as um, <clears throat> caring about other people who might put you down, 
who you know aren't in your circle. Also, I know it's hard to grasp this, but our opinion matters, right? So like <clears throat> if someone gives us constructive feedback, it's important to think about that and say, you know, what the person said, can that help me develop as a person? Or do I want to filter that out and not really care about that? So sometimes, you know, when people talk, it's constructive criticism and we might have a hard time with constructive criticism, but if we care about personal development and so on and so forth, um, and we know and feel confident with our strengths and values and can go back to that, um, we can have a growth mindset and say, okay, I have all these wonderful qualities about me. I have these values, I have these strengths, I have these passions and what they're saying to me isn't infringing on my values and it's only going to help me be a better person. So yeah, you make a, you make a lot of, a lot of important points, Brooke, and you give us a lot of important tools. Whenever I think of taking things personally, because I do, I think we, you know, uh, many of us ADHDers are um, subject to taking things personally all the time with friends, family. And I always try to ask myself, is this very real or is my mind just looking for something to grab onto? Right. And I got that question from a book called Inward by Young Pueblo. And um, I recommend this book called Inward to so many people out there. The book um, kind of explores the movement from self-love to unconditional love, the power of letting go, which is super important when we take things personally, and the wisdom that comes when we truly try to know ourselves. In this book, it's just every single page has a quote, a saying, a, a daily affirmation, I, I, like to, I like to say, it, that is really just hits that, it just makes makes total sense. And um, I, I found it online and I was just going, you know, how Google gives you the free, you know, first 30, 50 pages. I was reading through all of that and I finished it and I was like, darn it, my sister's birthday is soon. So I just ended up buying it for my sister's birthday. And I always sneak upstairs to go through, um, and go through it. So it's kind of like my own gift, but her gift. And I think, um, it's, it's, it has a lot of important points that it brings up. It talks about sometimes deeper mental clarity is preceded by great internal storms. Sometimes we're going to fall into that, you know, analysis paralysis. We're going to take things personally, but that that's that internal storm I bring up. That is that uh, the future of deeper mental clarity coming. It's important to understand that. Um, you want to understand that it's, it's um, you don't need to change the past because it made you who you are today. You bring up the past book, which is super important, that source. Um, you only want to learn from it and live in a new way, right? So, and a real sign of progress is when we're no longer punishing ourselves for our imperfections. So whenever you start seeing that, when you don't punish yourself for imperfections, you know you've reached progress. And I think these are all small little sayings that come from the book Inward by Young Pueblo. He also has another book called Clarity and Connection. And um, I was studying the other day with some of my classmates and it's newer classmates. I just met them and they, they brought all their friends over and they were talking about how they have a group chat and they were talking about how they send each other daily affirmations every day. I think it's super important to um, build that confidence and send each other daily affirmations. Just a little reminder, because sometimes we take things personally when we shouldn't be, but sometimes we do and we should accept the constructive criticism, which you bring up as well. So I think um, surrounding yourself with the right people, you know, those group chat self affirmations and um, we ruminate. And sometimes we need to interrupt that rumination, go for a workout, release that stress, that static energy on top of your shoulders, release it. And um, sometimes you just need to go and change your surrounding, your setting, talk to someone and um, just switch it up, just stir up the pot a little bit. So, yeah. 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 And I also want to, those are amazing recommendations in word. I'm going to look that up for sure. Mm -hmm. I haven't read it. I'm going to add it to my list and put it on my shelf and hopefully I'll finish the book. <laughs> <laughs> with all of my other books <laughs> the couple of sentences each page you know all you gotta do is read a page a day or just you can read like five in less than a minute so yeah go ahead exactly but um i want to just clarify like our past builds who we are today but we're not always in my opinion 
our past because we can be whoever we want to be. You know, we could be our future. We could be our present. Um, But if we live in the past, we get stuck in the past. So I think that our past is the foundation of what we are today and it can influence our decisions and our thought processes. But I try so hard personally to not live in my past um, so much, especially, you know, the mistakes that I made or the experience, the negative experiences that I've had. So I just wanted to share that too. Yeah. um, You just kind of learn from it and live in a new way, right? Just um, exactly. Yeah. Grow into, you know, just learn, learn as much as you can from it. Yeah. I agree with that hundred percent. Exactly. Um, and I love the positive affirmations that you have in your support groups, um, for your study support groups. I think that, um, you know, talking about like, you know, what we're grateful for and rewarding ourselves for, um, the small little, um, things that we get done will all increase our, our way that we view ourselves. So when negative when information is brought our way that we might have perceived negatively it won't hold as much weight 100 100 100